How's everybody doing? I'm Jason Vizzano, CEO of Vectorform, and today I'm here to talk about wearable computing, getting intimate with our devices. When I first announced my TED Talk, I got a lot of interesting questions. Intimate, what are you talking about, intimate? So I thought it'd be a good idea to tell you what I'm not going to talk about. <laughs> this is Kevin and Leah. They were recently married, and they were recently married with Google Glass. Kevin convinced his wife to actually let him have Google Glass at the wedding, and like any good geek, he married her. We can imagine that intimate experiences resulted as a result of this, but that's not what we're going to talk about today. Wearable computing. Let's first talk about where we're at. Let's get a basic understanding of the current landscape of computers. Generally speaking, we provide input to computers with touch. A few dozen gestures, a couple hundred key command strokes, but it's really our active attention focused on providing this input. Basically, one human computer interface stream. The idea of an active input, writing an email, texting. I'm sure many of us are doing that right now. One stream. When we talk about wearable computing, we have many, not only active streams, but the idea of a passive stream. We have sensors all over our body providing information, biometric, tapping into our neurological brain waves. We have sensors hooked up to our cardiovascular system so that they actually can measure our heartbeat. Endochronic, measuring secretions. And kinetic, understanding muscle movement. We also have visual input. Audible, for instance, my device here can tell, am I in a crowded room or am I alone by myself? And certainly location. This is a lot of data going on at one time, but it's not data that I need to be focused on. It's all passive. It's all happening in the background. One could ask, though, are we going to suffer from data overload dealing with all this data? Is it going to become too much? Are we going to suffer from data paralysis? Well, let's take a look. Let's take a look at how we currently consume data. Let me take a moment and geek out, if I may. Let's start off with the graphical user interface. I think we all know what this is. Keyboard, mouse, maximize, minimize, icons. All that data would not be possible to consume on a graphical user interface. We've evolved from GUI, or graphical user interface, to NUI, or natural user interface. Many of us have NUI devices in our pockets right now. With touch gesture, the idea is the content itself is the interface. It's a very important point. But still, too much data, too much data from possible wearable computing that natural user interface won't accomplish this. So at Vectorform, we thought long and hard, how do we change the paradigm? How do we do something completely different that allows us to take advantage of this huge data that's amongst us? So we've come up with a new idea. Instead of new E, it's new E, natural user environment. And the idea is that the environment itself is our interface. It allows our technology to actually disappear. Let me give you an example of what I mean by that, some pretty abstract thoughts. At Vectorform, we're huge home automation nuts. Some of us have been doing it longer than others, but the reality of the situation is that when we first started, all we had was the GUI. And as you can see on screen here, look at all that data. Just to control a light, it'd be faster to drive home and simply switch the light off. Certainly, we saw some advancements with NUI, cleaner apps, a little bit easier to use, but still a little bit information overload we weren't able to actually interface with our environment. But now, with NUI, our natural user environment, we can interact with the world around us. The environment itself is our interface. Here I have a video to share with you. Audio, please. Natural language All commands, right. and also chain multiple commands together. And that really creates a very fast, intuitive, and powerful way to interact with the many physical devices inside my home. Unlock back door and close garage door.
Set thermoset to 72 degrees. Lower shades and turn on living room lights and watch TV. For me at least, the most exciting part of this experience, other than being some of the first people in the world to have class, was actually bringing it back to our Detroit office and watching our developers here begin to experiment with it. Thank you. So the idea is Kevin was actually controlling his environment. With a wearable technology, we can actually take all this data about ourselves and the world around us and process it in real time. The information becomes available to us as we need it versus a graphical user interface that's constantly sending it to us and we can't discern how we can possibly deal with it. So a few months ago now, we were at a golf outing for the Michigan Autism Alliance. It's a great outing and uh, a few of the Detroit Pistons were there. It was actually kind of a cool thing. Um, some of the Pistons were standing in the corner and I said, you know what, might be a good idea to maybe approach these guys and talk to them. I've uh, never really spoke to an athlete before. I have no idea what the heck I could say to this guy. So I noticed it was Rasheed Wallace, and I was really excited that he had come back to Detroit. So I said, you know what? Whatever. I'm just going to get up the nerve, and I'm going to talk to this guy. So I thought about it for a second, got strategic. I was like, all right, I'm going to wait till he sits down so he can see me at eye level. <laughs> I go over to Rasheed, and I say, hi, I'm Jason Vizzano, and you use wearable technology. He looked at me startled for a second. Didn't know what to think. He said, well, actually, do you mean the jerseys with all the sensors in them? I'm like, absolutely. That's a wearable technology. So I continued the conversation. I asked him, well, what do you guys use this for? Tell me. He's like, well, uh, for defensive schemes. We do real-time analysis on mechanics of players. I'm like, that's awesome. And it got me thinking, wearable technology is, is here. We're using it. Many of us in the audience today are using Nike Fuel Band, the Fitbit and the jawbone up. These technologies are available now. And the beautiful thing is that they're reporting information without us having to do anything. They're providing information about us in real time, about our health, heartbeat, and our muscle condition, and our sleep habits, helping us become a better you and helping us have better sleep patterns. Let me tell another story. This is Mark Sanders. He's our CFO. He's a beast. Every Friday, we play ultimate frisbee at the office. There is no defending Mark. But one day, one of our developers who was wearing glass along with some other wearables decided to really push himself and do something different. Chris, pick him up, pick him up. Oh. As you can see there, the developer actually denied Mark. There is no defending Mark, but here he did it. This is a moment of victory. He wasn't taking a picture from the sideline. He was in the moment, delivering the moment, and then capturing the moment all at the same time. Sure, his pay probably got docked, but now he has that moment for life, a trophy to success. This gets me into a little bit about advanced wearables. This is where it's going next. I mentioned tapping into our, our neurological systems, our cardiovascular and endocrine. Right now, there's sensors available that can give us real-time information into our glucose reading, okay? Connect via Bluetooth. Have the ability to actually detect our mood by looking at our serotonin levels. Checking out what stress we're at by looking at our cortisol. And then to the right, you can see a contact lens. That is an actual heads-up display on the inside of our heads-up inside of our contact lens, and this is not far away. This is as close as we're going to get before we actually fuse directly with computers and become bionic. It's incredible stuff. This is Xavier. He's my son. And if any of you have little ones, you know how difficult it is to keep up with the demand of their curiosity. Why this? Why that? It's, in, it's constant. It can be very draining. But with all this information that wearables can provide in real time, is it possible that wearable technology could actually adapt to our curiosity? Could it actually keep up with our curiosity? And if we could answer these questions, 
in real time? How could we examine larger problems and look at things more holistically and solve deeper and more meaningful problems? The promise of wearables brings this, that technology will be in our life, but not in our way. Thank you very much.